Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Modest Siblings. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we read Anne Wheel's Blue Days at Sea. Um, you need to be aware before you listen to this or read this book that this is a 1981 Harlequin. So that means it has the worst dudes in all creation. Like the hero is slightly better, but that's only because one of them is an attempted rapist. It's bad. There's also um, a lot of kind of internalized misogyny, some like crappy gender roles and that kind of thing. And along with that goes like some some real sneaky little just all of a sudden out of the blue fat shaman. Just just like- Served as as an as an hors d'oeuvre, if yeah. you will. It's an amuse bouche. Yes, like just except like, it's not because you shouldn't be eating anything. God damn it, you're gonna no. get fat. It's like yeah, it's like that. It's kind of like diet culture um, stiletto, not the heel but the knife, like yes. that. Um, it also has like so many labor law violations that we just cannot even begin to enumerate them. Oh yeah, no, there's this. They- it's bananas, like this guy. Um, we also have a men's fashion loincloth yeah i, I kind of that's not a trigger warning that's just like awesome it has pockets it does have pockets yeah but then he takes off his uh, like uh his uh, swim trunks out from under that and puts his like salty sea seasoned ball sack on a bar stool that some other unsuspecting human is gonna come sit on innocently so i think you need to know about that before you read this book we have a boat escape. We have a boat escape. A la Miami Vice style. <laughs> we also have a woman who goes into a 30-year mortgage in a foreign country to her just so that she can have sex. Yeah. So it's got bad financial decisions. Really bad financial decisions. Yeah. I mean, the house is cute, though. Yeah, it is cute. But, Lord. <laughs> so, anyway. The man is not. So. The man is not. It's the worst kind of mustache, you guys. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's not a good mustache. Um, so, yes. Hello. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. How are you? I am good. I Courtney finally, I, my number came up and the Rona got me. Um, so, I was out for a couple weeks. Yeah, we have. that's why we have not released an episode because we, like, literally physically could not by order of the CDC. Yes. Um, so... You know, if I sound wacky today, if I get a little bit whatever, it's, you know, wine, but also Rona. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play. I'm going I'm to, as a, as a COVID survivor, mm. I'm fully like, do we have ribbons yet? Do we have a COVID? You know, ribbon? we, we, that's weird. We don't, I don't think so. No, but I'm going to say as a COVID survivor all the time. <laughs> People are going to be so. I don't think they have a, such a thing as long rosé. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so we are reading again. This is Anne Wheels, Blue Days at Sea. And why don't you tell them why we picked this? Yeah, okay. So this is like a little curiosity, I guess, because we learned that there was a rumor um, several like, years ago at this point. Um, uh, we did uh, Sandra Kitt's Adam and Eva, um, which is the first um, Harlequin that's about an African-American co- couple um, and uh, has an African-American author. But and there were none before them that even had a black couple um, a, at all, except there was a rumor that I read that this book um, had a stealth black couple in the they just didn't describe the ambiguous, people. ambiguous, culturally ambiguous, which is weird because they love to describe skin tones in romance novels, yeah. <laughs> especially the woman. If she's not, you know, she's always either ivory or cafe au lait or rich chocolate or like whatever the woman they love to talk about women's skin. Yeah, but they don't in this one. So. Um, and then I, I read uh, when I, I got that at this point, it's been sitting around in my house for all this time. And then I did a little more research on it. And uh, yes, in an introduction to a book and we all says, yeah, I, that was me. It was totally me. And I can tell you which one it was because I wrote it, um, that I wrote them completely, you know, just did not describe their skin tone. And um, the editors, like, I didn't get any pushback from Harlequin. And I did get feedback from readers who saw, who knew what I was doing. And they were really positive about it. And that the cover was also... Um, you know, just uh, ambiguously skin tone. Yeah, the original cover was kind of ambiguous and it does leave. She leaves it to where people can insert themselves into the book if they want to like to see themselves. Um, But I assumed from reading that it was like that, that it would be in a situation where it would not be obvious that these people were not described as, you know, having grown up as, a, as like with a specific skin tone or in a specific um, community or any of that, that it just would be irrelevant. No, they talk about race all the time in this book. It's actually really important to the, yeah. um, the context of the book and what these people are doing for a living and everything else, which makes it so strange. And 
Yeah, and just keep in mind that this book is written by a white woman. Um, she is British born, and the p- characters in this book are either from Great Britain or West Indies. Um, there's, yeah, one American, I think, but this is the experience that is in this book is from more of a European or West Indian standard. Which, uh, and it's just, it's, it's fascinating, except that, like, you know, the, the thing I think that, that causes the most tension in this is that um, these people are constantly having conversations where it would mean something different if you had, uh, you know, grown up with certain prejudices in your life, if you had grown up with some kind of, you know, experience of systemic racism. That, uh, and and the fact that, that they're not specifically either black or white or, you know, biracial or like yeah. it, it, it's not at all mentioned is so weird. It's yeah. like it's like just a big the, hug missing from the book. At the very, very end, like there's a, a thing about her great great grandmother. Yeah, they do make it clear that she uh did have at least like um, you know, one white great great grandmother and and one dark skinned great great grandfather. Yes. But like the rest of their racial makeup is not at all like described. Right. And and every description of them could go either way as either very tanned or, you know, uh curly haired. Uh yeah, yeah but fair skinned. Yeah. yeah. It's purposely ambiguous. But it's so strange because it's almost like um She's trying, I think, very hard to be progressive. She completely fails on every other measure of progressive, like she on labor, on gender, on literally everything else. Uh, and but I'm not sure that like she has, I guess, the the cultural competencies um, right. to have really thought about like how their answers to questions and their the ways they discuss things might be different if they had different life experiences. Yeah. So anyway, that's just a, a kind of be aware of that as we talk through through this thing. It is also, even if that had not been like the the, the mild curiosity of that kind of uh, history of the book, um, it's just fucking banana pants. This book is bonkers. It is bonkers. <laughs> it is full on bonkers. It's one um, of those 180 Harlequin uh, pages that are so many things happen. So many things. Look, oh my God. So, um, Anne Wheel. Tell me about Anne Wheel. All right. So, Anne Wheel was born J. J. Blakeney. Um, she's a British newspaper reporter and romance author. She wrote her first romance in 1955, and she chose the name Anne Wheel and also Andrea Blake. Um, you know, she was born again in Britain, but she lived all over Europe. She really loved traveling and liked going to exotic places, and that's kind of reflected in her book, um, in her books. So, you know, she spent winters in Spain and summers, you know, on islands, and that's kind of seen in these books that she writes. Um, and she has an autobiography, or she was working on one. This is awesome, called 88 Heroes, One Mr. Right. Oh, oh. I hope it wasn't this one. <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope not. Um, so, yeah, why don't you read that back cover? Yeah, well, first of all, let me describe it. Um, so, like I said, the original cover to this, um, it's it's two people walking on the beach. And I'll, I'll put a, a picture um, on, on, on our show notes. But um, who are sort of like medium toned in skin. And it's like sort of, you know, like a big brushstroke kind of picture. Yeah. Our copy is one of those good old Harlequin presents um, with like the little round... I'm showing it to you like you haven't seen it. Um, the, the the little round painting in it. This is number 444. And it has the whitest woman in the world with possibly more teeth than humans have. Um, looking at the, you know, quote unquote camera. It has Vincent from The Young and the Restless. His name is Victor Neyman. Oh, I'm sorry. I remember it as Vincent. It's Victor Neyman. I have not seen The Young and the Restless since I was like, like I, I, wow. I would You could put a gun to my head right now. And I, I was, it's Victor Neyman. When he used to come on TV, uh, my, my grandparents would say, that's a bad one there. Victor and Nikki. That was the, <laughs> the couple right there. So anyway, it's got like clearly that dude um, is on there. And then like um, in the little weird, like tiny people, it's um, they are there are actually black people on the cover, but they're they're musicians, which yeah. is like weird and kind of uncomfortable um so and you can kind of tell that it is supposed to be sort of an island setting because there's also a tiny waterfall behind the tiny musicians none it's, of those things are in the book I mean, no for victor newman and you know this girl that looks like mia farrow yeah um, she looks just like mia farrow she's got like those um kind of like crazy eyes yeah <laughs> yes the mia farrow crazy yeah. eyes mia farrow crazy eyes so are you ready for the back i am back, back, back copy fate had thrown them together no, it hadn't. It was a fucking job ad. <laughs> job interview. Oh, my God. <laughs> Labor law violation number one. And Sarah wasn't going to let this opportunity slip through her fingers. For years, she had idolized dynamic television reporter Lyle Talbot. 
now working on his Caribbean newspaper was like a dream come true. An impressionable virgin, Lyle had mockingly labeled her. This is on the back fucking cover. This is how bad this book is. So Sarah decided it was high time to become a woman of the world and she could think of no better teacher than Lyle. But Sarah was soon forced to admit that as far as love was concerned, she was on a wild goose chase. She's a little bit of a sex pest, too, in this. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> like, <laughs> so Sarah comes from a fairly affluent family. Like, they're not rich, rich, but they're, like, medium rich, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and she is a girl reporter. She's the ripe old age of 21. Mm-hmm. And in London. In London. And she has met, like, she fell in love with this lyle guy who is basically ron burgundy um (laughs) yeah he's like a dashing it's funny because like he's like a reporter but he's also like a war reporter like a war correspondent i know but he also had like anchor vibes i know i know so i'm not quite sure exactly what this guy who's the guy who was hiding under the table for iraq war one like cnn's like uh, like um debut oh the storman oh the the one that everybody was peter somebody right um that's how old we are. Not only do we remember Iraq War One, we're old enough that we forgot all these people's names. Yeah. <laughs> so she had developed a she had a crush on him like what from way back when when she way back when, like six years ago. Uh-huh, when she was for like her. a teenager. Did she know it was him? I forget. Uh, until he went she went to the job interview. I can't remember. Well, she sees a um, a job posting and um, labor law violation two. It specifies a specific age that this person should be. Yeah. Um, and uh, like looking for somebody at a new newspaper on Compostela, which I believe I mean I think it's safe to say is like Barbuda. Yeah. Um, so it's like a, it's, a, it's a little plain hop menti. It was very strange. Like she has everything else real and then makes up an island. I was like. Well, that's probably the safer bet, I, I guess, guess, just so that you don't accidentally, because she talks a little bit about, like, the yeah. government and stuff. So you don't want to accidentally put a foot wrong and really, you know, upset people. But, yeah, it's it, it's clearly, um, it's it's there in the in the Leeward Islands, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it, it's right next to Antigua, but it's not Calabria Buda. Yeah. So, um, and he's starting a newspaper because there's not one there and there hasn't been for a long time. And her family, her dad comes from there. So she's kind of got like she's never really been there. And frankly, you don't get genetic local knowledge as a newspaper reporter. No. But, um, you know, that's her, I guess, claim to to getting that job. Right. Yeah. So she goes into this job interview. <laughs> so, OK, let's count the labor law violations here. Caribbean weekly newspaper Compostela Independent requires fully trained woman journalist age 25 to 35 for general reporting and women's issues. You couldn't be under 25 because... Lyle had no time for virgins. Mm. And, you know, if you're over 35, then you're just an old. I'm shocked it didn't specify a weight. I know. I, so this is in a hotel so that's room. That's number one. Ding, in ding, a ding. hotel room. That's in a hotel two. room. That's number two. So, and she, like, she walks in and it's Lyle Talbot. Lyle and, Talbot. And, like, uh, she li- tries to lie about her age, but it doesn't get very far. And then he gives her a drink. There's number three. Um, and then says that, like, he already knew all about her because he talked to her. He had dinner with her existing boss and her existing boss told Lyle that she was a virgin last night. That's like number three through 18. I, it's so like, <laughs> it's so. What the fuck? And then, you know, she automatically incorrectly assumes that like you're skeezy and gets up and he's like, oh, don't be all don't get so mad. This is why I wanted someone over 25, because all you younger Young girls are just virgins and can't handle it. And I was like, whoa, this is massively inappropriate. (laughs) Everything that is happening here. And then it kind of ends with like a don't call us, we'll call you situation. Yeah, she thinks she didn't get the job. And he also like wealth shames her. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole thing is terrible. It's so bad. Uh, The red flags that are waving in this fucking job interview. Oh, my God. But she wants the job real bad. He has this really intense fascination with her great grandmother who was from that like from one of the islands too and so she always feels like this longing for like the caribbean and i think that was part of it she's as well. also got this kind of like poor real little, little rich girl thing oh, going yeah, on where sure. she wants to prove herself yeah which i mean is an admirable yeah. thing to want to do and hilariously so um he comes to offer the her the job 
at her parents' house at dinner. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like number. Like, now we're on like we're in the thirties. Like, oh yeah. Well, now. he's wearing. Let me just explain what this man wore to dinner. Um, he's wearing. Um, his guest was equally informal. That's Lyle. Except that instead of a sweater, he was wearing a lightweight blouson of very soft chamois leather over an open neck shirt with a silk scarf inside the collar. Ron Burgundy is what Set this man on fire. He's probably extremely flammable. The man is Ron Burgundy. So and and she gets the feeling that um that he's offering a job plus, you know, <clears throat> a job. And she decides in her little 20 year old year old self, I'm gonna take the job. And if offered else, I might take that too. And I feel like part of that was really interesting in a way because, yeah, you know, a 21-year-old going on an adventure is kind of cool. But it was yeah. also... And you should absolutely, when you're 21, you should go and have an ill-conceived affair with some, like, dude wearing a ridiculous scarf around his neck. Do it. Yeah. It's the best time of your life to do that. Oh, <laughs> Prior to this, she's got a suitor that her parents love. Oh, named, yeah. Named Roddy. And here's what I love. Roddy's family is richer than her family. <laughs> And Roddy comes rolling up in a Datsun Z380, and it just cracks me up. I mean, I know that those are, like, sporty ones, but I was like, a Datsun. This motherfucker is driving around in a Datsun. He is supposed to be, like, you know, like, like one step below British aristocracy, and he is rolling in a Datsun. Uh, in my experience, people who had the most money... Do not drive flashy cars. But a dot set. They drive like a really old Mercedes. A dot set. Like a shitty looking Mercedes, but like no. you don't get rich spending money. Yeah, but you don't drive a dot. <laughs> like, but so he Dots, is. Uh, Dotson is Trans Am adjacent. Like, <laughs> Dotson is in that same wheelhouse of like bohunk idiot, you know. So he is. Um, like, you know, the traditional romance novel safe choice, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even it's not that she meets Lyle and throws over Roddy for Lyle. She was never that into Roddy. She was just kind of going through the motion with Roddy yeah. anyway. So he proposes and she's all like, oh, God, no. Uh -uh, let me out of the yeah. car. <laughs> yeah. You know, he tries to kiss her and she's just like, no, thank no, you. No, thank you. This seems like it would be inappropriate considering I just turned down your proposal of marriage. And so Roddy <laughs> is, you know, terrible, but not the sex pest. So yeah. He's he does at least one. leave. <laughs> He knows that no means no. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, plus for, plus for Roddy. But so, yeah, uh, after that, and then she gets surprised by Lyle in her own home for a job offer. And her parents are like, they obviously, maybe they know if they say too much, then she's definitely going to do it. So they're just like, just um, be careful. Oh, and then after she takes the job, she has this, you know, we hear about her mother who massively attacked is our basically our age um <laughs> like, these, these, she started early these and this, this child is like a child anyway but then she also has this conversation with her dad about sex oh yeah i forgot about that oh that was really awkward yeah she's basically like what do you think about sex before marriage and so he gives like this really is like well it's okay. I don't want to know about it, but you know. But, and the whole thing is kind of her exploring the concept of like, will I be a whore? Yeah. Because she has a friend, Liz, who has had, I guess, a few. Two. Like, yeah, like two affairs, like a perfectly normal people number no, to a slow. Not that any number is not okay, right? But exactly. then, like, if you are 21, if you have slept with two dudes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You're doing all right, you know? Yeah. But, uh, and, but she's heard from her friend, Rosemary. We did not understand the Rosemary story, even though it came out told differently by Lyle later in the book. Yeah. We never got the Rosemary story. I think she's just supposed to be like a fly off the handle clingy bitch. Evidently, she was um like a super feminist. And because we hear from the beginning that he's a guy who'll just love him and leave him. Yeah. But then we hear later, oh, well, she was just a crazy feminist who, and, and, but I did not understand the no, context of this no, conversation. Yeah, it was very strange. Nobody knows. But so anyway, there's Rosemary. So she's been talking with other people about, should I? Should I fuck? Yeah. Yeah, she's exploring the, the possibilities, which are endless to you when you are 21 and you think that you're like fat, but then you will later realize that you were amazing. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, so she goes and she goes shopping. Lyle tells her not to buy island clothes until they get to the island. But good, she goes good advice. And, she goes and buys like a sexy nightgown and does this stuff. The sexy nightgown's really cute. <laughs> yeah. And then they, you know, they fly to. Together. Yeah. Fly to Antigua first and then they're going to take another flight. Um, Labor law violation number 25. Yeah. But he's very much about like, 
upholding all of the like making sure people know that she's not his young girlfriend because Lyle's like 37 or something except the people on the plane think yeah. that they're a honeymooning yeah. couple and he like takes her first class and of course she's completely like starstruck and they okay they don't share a hotel room Mm-mm. but they do do all kind of things you don't do with your uh and- young new reporter employee in antigua you know, the first thing they do is get off the plane, go to the hotel. They're on they're in different wings. Yes. They, they make sure that we know that's appropriate. Um, and then she puts on this like orange velour bikini that has chains, which is amazing. Oh, yeah, I know. I was all about her bathing suit. And then Lyle's ass comes down all hairy and tan. That's how he's <laughs> described. He is described as very, very tan and oiled up like the man is basically drenched in lube. He has <laughs> he's ready body for hair. <laughs> Like, you know, so again, Ron Burgundy and this He's man. He's a gorilla with a tan, all right? This man In is, a skirt. Man is wearing what is called a men's fashion sarong. Yes. And, is, and he calls it a modern loincloth at one point. Yes. And it's got pockets. Yeah, it, it's got pockets. And he takes it off and basically has some nut huggers on, and <laughs> like his swimsuit. A very Magnum P.I. swimsuit, yes. which, you know, I appreciate I like in historical um, material. We get a lot of objectification of him. It's great. All right, yeah. And they, they go swimming and frolicking and they go after that, they go to the beach bar and her bathe, you know, and he takes off his wet bathing suit from under his man sarong. And they talk right, about I mean, a sarong is a gender neutral like, She's garment. sitting on a bar stool. And, and he, he literally straddles the bar stool. So I assume he's just like dangling the, the giblets. Like, is he like teabagging the bar stool? Yes, while they have a rum, like while they have planner's potch, while they yeah. have a rum potch. Yeah. And I was like, that is like Courtney's all time favorite drink. Cause I was like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. But next time you sit on a bar stool at, at like a swim up bar, well, a swim up bar, you wouldn't have it. Like the, at the tiki bar at a nice resort, you're going to be like, fun fact when <laughs> Courtney's first aside for the night. Um, when my husband and I went to Key West, we went to the original, what like, what was Captain Tony? It's like the big, like, bar hangout. And they have this thing where, like, where famous people, like, sit on the bar stool. They'll put whose bar stool it was. Oh, no. Did he sign it with his nutsack? <laughs> well, I sat on. I caught, like, I texted my, you know, I texted my friend. I was like, um, I'm sitting on Ted Kennedy. And he was like. Jump, <laughs> so, um, you know, bar stool because you know Ted Kennedy would have put his nutsack on that bar stool. Oh well, yeah. I mean, he obviously did put his nutsack on that bar stool. It's just that Ted Kennedy, of all things, had the grace to put fabric between him, his nutsack, and the bar stool. Yeah, but, but then he Lyle left it not. for like two hours. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. all right. So, um, ouch. Yeah. So yeah, he's wearing this loincloth. cloth. Oh, again, she's so up. into the loincloth that she oh, talks God. about the loincloth more than she at talks about length, the anything at else. length, that loincloth. <laughs> um, they go back, you know, they kind of take go rest and meet for dinner. And it's very, you know, but there's a couple there, um, like an older couple that just assumes that they're on their honeymoon. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how these people are acting in their first day, her first day at work. This is her first day on the job. So the next day they go to the island that they're going to be living in, you know, Compostela, Compostela, where they're going to have this schmarschmuda, this fucking magazine or whatever, this newspaper. newspaper. It's so like, well, and you can tell that she's actually a journalist because it gives you all the details. Like they're going to start out with a weekly and a this. Yeah, this book is so detailed, whatever. So. But my husband, like, I've, as for long as I've known him, has worked for a weekly newspaper. So it's- yeah. But, okay, so Sarah is being put up with this elderly couple. It's a, a minister vicar. and his wife. Yeah. yeah. Like, the- so it's very proper. And then Lyle has a, you know, former plantation house up on. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants to furnish it with awesome antiques and shit. But, like, you know. I- he also wants a woman's touch. <sighs> so, in other words, this man owns this uh, this haunted fucking mansion full of the ghost of enslaved people and he has these of course he's hired these young reporters because he's cheap as shit um and uh what they're doing on their time when they're not reporting and putting out a fucking newspaper is painting his house for him labor violation 35 yeah so she meets the rest of the team and the team consists of Dudley, there's like a guy named Jeff, and then there's a guy named Terrence. Um, Terrence is Irish, and he is our sex pest. Mm-hmm. Um, then we also have Vashti, and Vashti is mo- like biracial. Um, obviously, her family is East Indian, and 
we we know that because she talks about Vashti's hair. Um, yeah, which is weird because, or again, the main couple never uh, yeah. given no racial identity whatsoever. And the thing is, so Vashti, it's it's one of those obnoxious romance novel things where when the heroine walks in and sees a very attractive woman, um, uh, like just goes into a funk for three fucking months because they just assume that she must be with. The hero. Well, it was also <laughs> interesting because she kind of did the reverse of what you usually see in these books where, like, they're usually the most attractive woman coming in the room and, like, the other person it gets mad. But Vashti is, like, shockingly beautiful. Yeah, and Vashti's, so, you know. like, super cool. So... But well, how we know that like Terrence, like the, like the putting Terrence up on the sex pass mantle is that like he's essentially introduced because like Vashti, like uh, Sarah walks into a room just to see Vashti slap him, yeah. and storm out, <laughs> yeah, and um, and it's clear that he like I don't know put a hand on Vashti's ass or something. Yeah. I mean, it's like that. It's really obvious that that's what happened. There's also Dudley, um, but and all you know. They're all the there's beta males, yeah. Um, and I guess they're running the newspaper out of this guy's house, too. Well, there's an office, I thought it was in the house. No, no, there's an office in town because there's a kind of it's a small island, so there's like one main city, and like this, this uh house is out on a headland, which comes into play many, many times in different ways because people are always like washing up on it. But so, like, they kind of get into the swing of things, yeah. Um, and like they're never alone, which is weird <laughs> yes they're never alone um the one time that they are alone he does kiss her mm-hmm. there's a kiss she's super into it he stops she then later like decides basically because she is on the strength of this one kiss she is dtf she is dtf and she's also for as much as she is dtf she is tired of living with this old like this old vicar couple because the woman cooks with full fat and she has gained three pounds yes and she cannot afford as she tells someone else because they're like oh it looks good on you you know it wasn't it was like Like you can see three pounds but yeah yeah. it's just (laughs) like well i can't afford another three so i have to move out so on the basis of keeping from gaining three fucking pounds and also to try and fuck Lyle, she goes on this island that she has been on for like four months by this point. Four yeah. months, four months, four months. She's in a completely different, four months. She's like, I'm going to go down to the bank, the bank of Campostella, take myself out a 30 year fixed rate mortgage and buy this little cottage just so I can fuck Lyle and not. Gain Remember, three pounds. Lyle has a house. Oh, but everybody else is always there. Like, he couldn't tell them to fucking He's leave. He's got a whole ass house. This man has a whole fucking mansion. If he really wanted to fuck you, he would get a hotel room if he really felt like he couldn't got, do it in his own house. He's got 25 rooms in this house. He could fuck you in any one of them. You're buying, like, a two-room, 800-square-foot thing just to fuck Lyle. And not I have either. I have really wanted to fuck a dude in the past. I don't know if I thirty year fixed rate wanted to fucking do that. No, no, it's just like- you do dumb shit though. You do dumb ass fucking shit. Me? No, I mean just people. <laughs> was like there was a people. Po- there was a point happening. I was like, I was no, like, I mean I've never bought a house just to fuck a former newscaster. There. <laughs> like- <laughs> what is that man's name under that goddamn table <laughs> yeah, in scary. Baghdad? So, um, <laughs> yeah. So they end up. She buys like, and then she tells him about the house, and he's Peter like, "Peter Jennings is kind of hot." She, he, <laughs> she tells him about the house, and he's like, blah, 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 "Well, I have to see it first. Yeah, you know, he is a super asshole about it. Yeah. He's angry at her, stomps in the house, and requires that he get to look at, to to approve. By the way, labor law violation number forty eight. Um, the house that she bought with her own money. Yeah, and then he's like, I was like, also, Lyle, you're a fucking newscaster. What do you know about inspection? Right. Like, you're going to get down on this stuff and start looking at stuff, you know, because he tells, like, the, the, oh, my God, he tells her his one, his one note, his one note is, well, you're going to need a fire extinguisher with all this timber. I was like, so well, it, basically a house. Yeah. Basically a house, bro. Like, is what you're saying that she needs a fire extinguisher for because it's made out of fucking wood. Let's have a safety moment, by the way. No matter what your house was made out of, you should have a fire extinguisher well, yeah, in it. You should. You should go buy one right now. They are not expensive, and they will save your life. Just, and you should have one in your kitchen, and you should have one like if, in the hallway between your bedrooms if you have nothing else. It just else. killed me. Killed me. We have to. But, that he was just like this man was legit. Like his, he's like a man who, when your car breaks down, just opens the hood, even though he knows nothing about cars, oh, yeah. just to regard it and say, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so she thinks she's like, oh, oh, because he's kind of like, hey, how you doing? And, you know, and she thinks it's going to happen. And then all of a sudden somebody shows up and is like, hey, Lyle, your sister's here. And he's like, oh. And so we, go. we meet her sister, Rain, and her sister. I actually cool. got a little, it was kind of sweet in this like really sad way. And I was upset for her that she's got all these plans for, and I thought maybe I might invite you to the housewarming party. Yeah. And then he's like, he's like also kind of DTF, but he's not really picking up exactly what she's laying down. Yeah. Right. And so she's all like, Aww. so, but also she's a little sex pesty like yeah she is very 21 like hey 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 yeah hey but then like you know and he's like hello um um yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like that and also the funny thing is later in the book it's clear that like he could never have come to to fuck her in this house because the whole neighborhood is right on top of it yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's yeah right in there yeah right in this there you know it's, 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 it's like that they're all so she ends up like she meets, you know, the sister. They get along really well. The sister is a former model and now like political correspondent. It's not clear. Yeah. Yeah. She she is a Vogue model, like now political correspondent, which, you know, you can't be one or the other. That is, you know, we can't we can't go to the other side. Um, so they all go sailing one day wearing. T- There's a lot of sailing. There's a ton of sailing in this book. They're wearing T-shirts. It's the wazoo. Or oh, the... no, it's the best thing because there's outfits on this, but their outfits are what I used to wear when I was like eight in yeah. the 80s. <laughs> but there's the day where they go sailing and they all have on jokey T-shirts. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like Terrence has on a shirt that says, like, my wife has an alcohol problem, dot, 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 me. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> you know, yes. So somebody's yes. got like a concert T-shirt She's got on. a cat T-shirt on and I looked it up and it's what I thought it was. It was yeah. It's like a, Yeah. And so they're going sailing. And on this day they go sailing, there is, even though the water's perfectly clear, Gail, who is fat or pudgy, you know. She probably has that three pounds that she, uh, that Sarah left laying around. She got seasick because, and then what, you know, like Sarah's reasoning is that, oh, well, because she's pudgy, she probably skipped breakfast because she wanted to lose weight. Like, that's just thrown in the book. Yes. It's just, like, really upsetting diet culture business. Yes. Uh, also, it's important to note that this yacht is Terrence's yacht. Uh, Lyle used to have a yacht, but he sold it to build the newspaper because he loves journalism. <laughs> and so... So, like, Terrence, like, whenever they're on a yacht, it's always Terrence's yacht. But everybody <laughs> sails in this. Um Dudley teaches her how to sail. It's real sweet. Uh, yeah, like she gets super. She's like, "This is amazing. I've never been on a sailboat before. This is super cool." And I can relate. She gets a hobby. Yeah, yeah she like, gets a hobby, and they go out and they completely platonically yeah. early in the morning before work every day. So like they get up at like four in the fucking morning and go sailing. And go sailing. I'm like, why? Why can't you be DDF with Dudley? He seems nice. I know. He's not even trying to like grab your ass or nothing. I no. mean, you know. <laughs> and so there's a there's another like hot like heavy make out scene, you know, where he, they make out in his car and then he's like basically like get out of the car and he starts acting cold and she's like what happened? You know, um one of those things. What when is the business in the hotel? There's like one super fancy hotel. Okay, so what happens what what had happened was <laughs> is that she is she's basically just hanging out in town and all of a sudden she essentially turns around and there's fucking roddy yeah roddy is there this is not accidental you got to go to antigua and then get on another plane to get here all right this is not she's like i I, I once i knew in paris okay but paris is a place where lots of people go she's (laughs) like what the fuck are you doing here and he's like well i came to see you and like you know he shows up unannounced you know and she's like well i have to fucking work and all this kind of stuff (laughs) so he's like well you know i've got to find a place to stay like this is him being like spontaneous Mm -hmm. and so she's like and lyle is like she's trying to tell lyle uh sorry i have to work he shows up at work he shows up at the fucking office yeah. and like uh, lyle was like oh no your friend came all this way like you needed to have the day off like i, don't know. Well, well, I was trying the, to give you yeah, guys like so the the night before like you know when he first gets there she puts him in the fanciest hotel and he's like well let's have dinner and you know he shows up in like a white dinner jacket and she's like hee, hee, hee. it's really embarrassing yeah and you know he doesn't get the table he wants so he asks for another table and they're sitting there and she sees lyle come in with the island governor's daughter mm. and she's like you know and so she's sitting there with lyle oh, but like, don't worry the island governor's daughter's fat yeah yeah and so it's one of those where it's like i hope that he doesn't see me but i see him and you know and then you know roddy wants to dance and she's like fine i'll dance with you, you know, 
whatever. She's still like stink eye on Lyle. And, you know, they say hello. And the next day he's like, oh, you can have the weekend off. And she's like, I would never dream of like, you know, and he's like, your friend's here. It's cool. There's a rotation. And I mean, well, oh, to, to be fair, you better something better fucking happen if you want to not do your weekend and where I work. Yeah, <laughs> so, like it's okay if we're trading, but if you just like want to like just well, fuck, think, the fuck well, off. What he yeah. was just saying, he was like, "Well, you know, we'll trade." And she's like, "I would never ask you." He's, he's like, "Well, I'll work it. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's not putting anybody out." And so she's like, "God damn it!" So she has to hang out with Roddy for a week, and then Roddy at the end of it's like, "Well, you love it here. That's awesome. I'm glad. Bye." But no, 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 no. He does not just say bye because he what he says when they're in the hotel is essentially like. I thought if I came here. Well, yeah, he does say that at, yeah. on day one. But by yeah. day seven, he's like. It's weird and awkward a bit. But like, yeah, but he, he does try it. He tries to be like, if I came here and did a grand gesture, obviously, yeah. that means that you will marry me. And she's like, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry you spent a lot of money. Just take your fucking Dotson and go home, dude, because like <laughs> this is not happening. Sarah, Dotsons don't even fly. No. Um, so I don't know what Dotsons do. So, yeah, but he does, like, when she says no, he, he doesn't push it. And, like, yeah. by the end. Which makes him the second best dude in this, like, right after uh, Dudley. Dudley. And so they're cool. So, like, and then her and Lyle have, like, a little spat because Lyle's like, oh, look, that's your boyfriend? And she's like, oh, was the fat girl at dinner your <laughs> girlfriend? And, like, so they have, like, this square off. Um and, you know, they kind of leave bad. She's each afraid other. that he's going to make a political marriage. <laughs> like, OK, I, again, I don't want to be. Like, but, so my husband has, has has spent a long time in journalism and now he just finally left it for the marketing thing. Um, I should have asked him if he ever considered marrying the commanding general's daughter. To yes. To cement his place. <laughs> On the on the base. Yeah. On um, post. Yeah. Yeah. That's banana fucking pants, girl. <laughs> and so, um. So the next thing that we have happening is she's hanging out. Well, we our first inkling of our second inkling of sex past Terrence being a terrible dude is they're walking home one night and a guy almost runs them off the road. Because they're each other's like the, the newspaper people. They just hang out together constantly yeah. because they're kind of their, their own like social yeah. group. So the, this guy almost hits them and Terrence goes to yell, you black. And then he stops and says, bastard. Mm -hmm. And um, she's like, was he going to say black person? And like, so there's a really interesting thing about that, about like, you know, people but who then use... this is one of those conversations that would be different. Yeah. Whether she were black or white. Yeah. But she's like, you know, it's one of those where I, I would I, I would never like be friends with a racist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then later on, after her and Lyle have had their fight, you know, like about whatever, about the the Roddy island government. they're always getting some kind of little tiff going yeah they're all supposed to go sailing and she gets on to the, terrence's yacht on terrence's yacht and she gets there and she's like well where are dudley and jeff who are the other guys oh a big news thing happened on this island where nothing happened so we're gonna pick them up at lunch yeah there's like some secret yeah celebrity or something as yeah and and, and she i i blame her parents for this <laughs> because any child of mine would have been like no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so they're on the yacht. That sounds fishy as motherfucking shit. They're on the yacht, and they're maybe like 100 yards, 150 yards offshore. And they go to different coves, and this one is particularly, like, you can't even get down to it from, yeah. it's really remote. It's really remote. And Lyle puts the boobs on, and, you know, she says something to him. Like, he is, like, seriously being sexually aggressive, and she says something, and he talks about Vashti. And calls her some kind of racial slur. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember what it is in the book, but it's like, you know, it's it's there. Um, and she's more upset about that, which, you know, rightfully so. But also, like, this man is about to rape you. Yeah, I mean, like, he, he does not actually, like, harm her physically. He kind of, like, um, he kind of goes in for, like, the hard kiss and she says no. And she's more afraid of his... Um, his demeanor. But he won't stop. Yeah. yeah. He won't stop. And she realizes how isolated they are. And she sees in his face that she's like actually in, in, in physical danger. Yeah. So. And she's like, this guy can overpower me. But she, like, they do make a point to be like, he's not big and he's not strong, but I'm a woman. So I'm therefore weaker. That line is in there. I was like, mm -hmm. great. And so what she does, which is awesome. Yeah. She, you know, because she's in a bikini because she's only in a bikini in the book. Yeah. Um, or in this, in, in her one fancy dress where she dresses for dinner at the hotel. Yeah. And so she jumps off the boat mm -hmm. and swims to shore. 
and just goes up a goat like a literal goat trail like goat yeah it's her and the goat and like she's all in the bushes and the brambles and just her bikini um so she's all cut up her feet are cut up because she's had to walk a mile barefoot on this gravelly like and she thinks she can kind of figure out she finally comes to like a car road like a yeah. real road and she's kind of knowing where she is so she's like i i think maybe if i, I can make it to lyle's yeah. You know, I mean, and this is like, it, it is actually kind of, you know, this is, this is scary for it's her. It's harrowing. Yeah. yeah it's harrowing. It's, it, it's legit. Like she doesn't know if he's behind her. Yeah. She doesn't know. I mean, and, and, and yeah, forget that. Like she's walking around the road in all a bloody in a bikini. So something else could also happen. Yeah. So she's, she's legitimately frightened for a really good reason. And Lyle happens to drive by. Yeah. So he gets her in the car and she doesn't just come and say, Terrence tried to rape me. Mm-mm. Like it's this 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 part is like so he gets her to the to the place. This is where I'm throwing things right now. Well, one of the, the one of the places where I'm throwing things because there's a point where I like woke my husband up to tell him what happened. This book. we'll get there. You right. just wait. So he gets her back to the you know his plantation, and you know he tells her to go take a shower. He gives her some brandy because you know they've always got to have brandy. Um, gets her cleaned up, and then basically. And her feet are in real bad shape. Yeah. It asks, you know, he has to carry her everywhere, kind of asks what happens. And he's trying to suss out, like, who did it? Mm -hmm. You know, he's kind of like, who did this? But you find out later. I think you find out later, or or does he knock on the door? No, he comes, like, as she is, like, she's standing there and it, like, basically just gotten out of the shower and she hears Terrence's voice and she's terrified. And And what she honestly thinks is that Lyle is going to believe whatever Terrence says. Terrence, like, you should never fuck a guy who you would think will believe you're rapist. Like, he says to Terrence, like, to, to Lyle, like, oh, you know how these ladies are, you know, um, they always be teasing me. Mm -hmm. And so then what Lyle's asked us is, like, hands her ass a robe. Tells her, like, picks her up, makes her sit in the room with Terrence. And it was trash bag. Yeah, like, he, she has already given him, like, the basic red, like, listens to what Terrence has to fucking say. And then when Terrence leaves, it's like the kind of mediation a teacher does with two second graders. Yeah. So when Terrence leaves, she's then, like, he's basically like, well, What's your side? And she doesn't want to get Terrence in trouble. Yeah, yeah. He's like, what do you think I should do? And he just, she says, well, you can't fire him because it would be bad for the newspaper. And then what he basically does is like, well, you've made out with me a few times. You know? It's horrible. Yeah. It's really upsetting. It's yeah. like genuinely not like, I mean, okay, so when you read this kind of book, you're like, okay, it's 1981 and this guy has a predator mustache. But like, no, this is like, it, this pissed me. What got off. him, what got Terrence fired is how he talked about Vashti, mm-hmm. which yes, yes, but also you should be fired for both things. Yeah, he should have fired him for Vashti, then rehired him to fire him for like attempting to rape Sarah. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that like number 45? Oh, God. Um, we're like in the law? 70s by yeah. this point. So. But he's very like, it's very like, he's very comforting and very competently like doing her. Is is this the point where he plays the recording of their fucking interview? Yeah. He's, and she like, finds out that he's been real to real taping all of his job interviews. Because he felt bad because in the thing he says that he is like his responsible for protecting her. Like that was, and he was like, "I failed my job." Yeah, you fucking did, asshole. Yeah, because maybe yeah, it's like just encourage people to be running around in the bikinis all the time. So no, you should be able to run around in whatever kind of work bikini well, you want to work in without being thinking. Well, yeah, <laughs> obviously, but at the same time, like this book is just bonkers. And so I can't wait for them to issue me the library theme bikini. I would love to. See I hope that they do because I shave nothing. I would love for you to have your velour bikini looking like. Fucking Zardoz. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's awesome is that the lady in Adam and Eva also has an orange bikini. Yeah. Although hers was like PVC. It was yeah. kind of like fetishy. Yeah, it was that scuba like material. I tell you what's yeah. awesome is like a, a, a lady in an orange bikini who like owns her orange bikini. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and so like, but yeah, the other like weird fat shaming that happened is this other woman shows up to bring her clothes and she's like, well, it's going to be a little big in the chest because I'm heavier than you kind of thing. Yeah. It, this is a constant, but little yeah. throughout the entire thing. It's just constant, but little. Yeah. So like, did, did you Devereaux write this, but only like not as horrible? So, <laughs> They close out the traumatic experience by her being like, "So, uh, uh wow, we gotta, we gotta fuck." And he's like, "Well, I guess we can have an affair." And she's like, "I guess, 
it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'd like to. And he's like, at first he's like, you know, some versions are professional teases. And I was just like, what is oh. happening? And like, they have this whole thing that's at like her house. Yeah. Where he can't like really come in or he has to like leave the door open or whatever because he's trying to like protect her like public virtue. Yeah. Because yeah, again, she does have to work in this community. He does honk her boobs basically in the car though. Yeah. It's like yeah, a boob honk. Oh. Um, so he's like, okay. All right. Obviously. Um, we're going to fuck. I'm going to, like, bore you. But we can't do it here because I, we can't do it. You bought in, this house for nothing, bitch. Yeah, you bought this house for nothing. We can't do it in your house because the neighbors are looking. We can't do it in my house, my giant isolated plantation. That is because, on a hill. That is on the top of a fucking hill. Because there's always people in and out of hair. Yeah. I can't I can't put a fucking lock on the door or anything. No, no, no. We couldn't possibly do that. So we're going to go to a hotel in Antigua to fuck and like as if they were 17 so she's all super like you know she's excited she's excited but she's also like she realizes that what she really wants is marriage from this guy which i mean that's a valid choice and so is not wanting marriage from this guy but she's like excited but she's also like "Mm, i love him she doesn't feel good she she feels really gross about it and it's like she's trying to talk herself into feeling good about it and he lies and he doesn't she doesn't like a lie you know, he she he he lies about why they're going where they're going. Like because like, oh well we're gonna see her hold parents. On, hold on. Yeah, like they lie, like they make up a thing, like where she's like they're gonna both take a week off. Like he's going somewhere else and they say that her family is like she's going They don't like it turns out they didn't actually lie. Yeah. Oh well, so she's like she's getting ready for the the behoring. She's like in the hotel room, she's like ready for him. Like Well, they go to the beach. And they don't fuck, they get to the hotel and don't fuck when they get to the hotel. And they go to the beach and she's just like, she's mentally like, like getting fuck ready. And then they get back to the hotel and they take a shower and she's like. And then uh, like, you know, she, and she's like, the whole thing is she's working herself up to this. And then she hears her father at the door. Surprise, your parents are here. Surprise, because we're getting married today. Yeah. it's like I've invited everybody we know. It's a surprise wedding. This is where I threw, I put this book, I, I didn't throw it, but I slapped my, like, thigh with it. And I woke my husband up to be like, Wallace, Wallace, get up, get up, get up. She, he, he planned a wedding without her. He fucking, and he's like, didn't that, I thought that was the last book. No, actually, the last book, she invited him to their wedding, but at least it was an invitation. No, no, she's no invitation. She's, she's like, here's your dress. My sister picked it out for you. I hope you fucking like it. You see, it didn't bother me as much because I was just amazed that a man planned the whole ass thing without okay, asking fair, for like fair asking for all the little details and without like, like just getting credit for planning a thing but actually like making you make all the decisions yes exactly yeah, so okay. but yeah so they have a surprise wedding um well no it's only a surprise to one of the participants yeah. <laughs> but she's like totally down for it she's like yay um i'm not actually i'm still a madonna yeah instead of a whore so and then yeah they're basically she's like "Uh uh-huh she pretends to be mad at him for a minute and then i would slap him but i'm afraid his mustache might have barbs i wonder if he wore his like (laughs) if he's got a dress he's got a formal like a a full mess um loincloth like if it's like the tuxedo t-shirt well i can tell you what's not wearing anything and that's his nasty ass ball sack oh my god in front of her father just like sitting there being hairy oh it's so bad i like the way they move around and stuff all right so big dick energy or big dick i hated this man so fucking much he I, like i did not like him he's he i don't like him he's not in like my top level of like dudes i hate like nobody's gonna beat the fucking ca- captive passions guy like oh yeah that guy was real bad uh like he's very patient. No, no, no. What's his name from Ride the Thunder? Is my personal like. Oh yeah, that yeah, one. Most yeah, most hated guy. So he's not great by any stretch of the means, but I mean, it does take a little bit of big dick energy to wear a, a fashion sarong <laughs> and then just let your, <laughs> let your boys dangle on a public seat. So you know, as a public librarian, I can tell you that it really doesn't take a lot of big dick energy to do that. It happens every day in a public space near you. But yeah, he is very, very like patronizing. 
and the thing okay i could have put up with a lot of shit from him because it's 1981 all right yeah uh but when he stormed into the house that she bought with her own money had nothing the fuck to do with him except that she was his employee to, to, he was mad at her for buying a house well the thing i think that's really kind of weird about it is i'm making ice noises um the thing that's weird about it is it takes a little bit of time to plan a secret wedding yeah and so he well, must, it might be like like at Caesar's Palace or something where they well, have. No, but like, I mean, a like you have to get like. But okay, so he must have been questioning her when he wanted, like, questioning, like, is she a sex menace? Like, is she a professional tease? As he likes to, like, you know, like act like. And then, like, you're basically asking this of the person that you're like planning in secret to. Yeah, marry. you already talked to her mom. And she, yeah, so that's like, you have sent her your your sister. You know, like guys in romance novels always have those caliper hands. Yeah, like with with the measurements that she assumes that that he assumes that she is because you know a wedding dress is, you can just eyeball that shit. That's not like yeah. you know like six different fucking fittings and yeah exactly. Yeah. So like it's just uh, yeah he's not he sucks but he's pretty bad. But again he's he's got enough confidence to be lubed up. <laughs> in a loincloth and wear like let's picture Dan rather like wearing shirts unbuttoned to his navel and stuff oh like yeah that. yeah so, he's, he's the he's the furry kind of old so you're talking about, like he, he, yeah he probably had the best for, for me the best like man wardrobe yeah I mean I'm trying to think of who else has had a man wardrobe other than that awful dude in Ride the Thunder um, maybe it's only on the cover of Captain Passions, dude, but he definitely had like some, some, well, he some looked like the Quaker Eyes fan. Business guy. I hated that guy. Um, <laughs> I did not hate him as much as you. I wonder if we were to go back and re- we should revisit one of our old episodes, oh, like God. read the book again and like just see them through completely new Thank eyes. God. Okay. <laughs> so would you talk shit with her about the heroine? I did not like her. I, I like her. I think that was the thing. I liked her less. Yeah. Because he was at least like a guy with a she. Well, but the thing is, like, she was annoying in a way that was a little too realistic. Mm-hmm. Like, she was a little bit too much like an actual young person. She's so young, She's she so feels young. young. I, yeah, I was worried about her all the time. Yes, and her mistakes are honestly really really realistic mistakes yeah. like her idea like love 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 fuck 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 love love fuck fuck. I mean, it's it's like that, and also that she stresses about six pounds. Yeah, um, I mean that that's the fault of the the terrible culture she lives in. Yeah, but still. But but yeah, that has an impression on her, but not at all any systemic racism that she may or may not have experienced in her entire life. Diet culture made an impression. Nothing else. No, not yeah, at all. Not at all. Mm, like, crazy pants, y'all. Back to all the bitch is surprising in this. This seems like the kind of book where there's a blonde girl and a brown headed girl. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, no, no. Er, uh, there's a lot of really positive relationships with other women in this book. Yeah, she's got her friend. She, you know, she's got a friendship with this girl named Liz. She's got a friendship with Vashti. She's got a friendship. What, once she realizes that Vashti is engaged, like, and no longer like you know a threat. Yeah, and you know she makes friends with Rain, who is the sister, so she's not a threat. Uh, uh, she, he, she and her mom are close. Yeah, her and her mom are close, even though her mom's like. A little bit overbearing because I was like, oh, here we go with the mom. But, you know, like, no, in a, in a way, a that, like, mom. honestly, if that were my kid, she's obviously very unworldly. So I'd be like really concerned that yeah. she's heading out. You're heading out on your own. I kind of thought you meant like back to London, not to a country you've never been to. Flying first class with a gentleman who came to our house wearing a bomber jacket with a knotted scarf. <laughs> I'm concerned <laughs> about this, sweetheart. Yeah, no. Um, so- Use protection. Wrap it the fuck up. Yeah, so she's got, you know, she's got some good female friendships. There's a lot of women in this book. They do a lot of painting together for free of a man's house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it feels like fucking summer camp. Only y'all are working <laughs> for your boss for extra things for free for his house. I, 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 okay, if it was the office, that'd be one thing. Like, the office is the thing we all use. This is his enslaver mansion. Oh, my God. It's like Ernest. She's she's scalding antiques for him. Ernest saves the colonial camp. Oh, my God. Jesus, motherfucker. Okay. So. When it comes to consent, is this book Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? I don't want to say that this woman cannot meaningfully please consent because she is twenty years, 21 years yeah. old. However, she seems so young in this that I feel that even when she is consenting that she is being manipulated by 
Well, we don't. Yeah. And like with our hero, we don't have sex. They don't ever have sex. They have the he lures her to the hotel with the, the, like, the promise of sex. But she he baits and switches to marriage. <laughs> What the fuck? It's the first time ever that has ever happened. Yes. But like, yeah. And of course, like, uh, like that that asshole, um, Terrence, like tries to, yeah, tries to rape her, which is really upsetting. But then, like, uh, yeah, what's what's upsetting to me is not, of course, like you know, you, like you dumb fucking asshole. You knew that Vashti, who you know is an upstanding and reliable yeah. witness, slapped him. And you went alone on a boat with him. Yeah. You don't deserve what happened, but you should have known. And then so then you run to this guy, yeah. Lyle, and he doesn't really treat you that much fucking better. He doesn't try to, like, assault her, but he 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 he, he believes her sort of. A little bit. It's very victim shaming. Yeah, I, I, I was upset by that whole yeah, scene was, around that. Did not enjoy. Like, it, it's not that she came to him and he was, well, for one thing, like, she was afraid to tell him to start with. Yeah, because she didn't want to make trouble. Yeah. Which, again, but, I, and she like, was like, right because he didn't respond as an, oh my God, I'm not just going to fucking fire him. I'm going to deport him. No, no, yeah. no. He was like, well, let's, let's see what everybody has to say about this. Let's bring you into the room with him so yeah. you can talk about it. Yeah, she was fucking right. She was right to be worried about yeah. it. Oh. Uh, how, how badly are you judging your mom off for reading this? This is, like, very on brand with, like, the book, like, that what she had. I read so many books like this back mm-hmm. in the day. I really did. They were just... I mean, I just I, I, I chewed them up and I spat them out and I didn't think very much about yeah. them. Yeah. Which is, quite frankly, like, the source of a lot of, like, damaging ideas. If yeah. you read enough of these things about gender roles and, yeah. you know, what to expect from men who are supposed to be good men. Like, honestly, it's not better that they spring marriage on you than that they spring fucking on you it not at either rate i mean that's a huge consent issue you should marry somebody not who like all right like if if, if y'all had kind of an understanding and he proposed to you on the jumbotron great if you're just wondering when it's gonna happen right but if out of the fucking blue that is manipulative and shitty fucking behavior yes, it is. yeah so he did more than that he married her without consent he just like sprung a whole fucking wedding on her yeah, he was just at, like, at hey. least the crazy lady in the last book that we read uh tonight and forever at least she only came up with a fucking invitation at yeah, least she it just had an invitation printed she could have a whole wedding I mean, she had the wedding waiting, but he could have left at that but point. You know what? I feel like that's also like Lyle's like celebrity is that because you know because again he's a very famous newscaster. Mm. Like that, he just like in what world is she gonna say no to Lyle? You know, it's so well, I, I, he he really paints her to a corner because her parents are already there. Yeah. So if she were to say no, what would have had to happen? Oh. She would have had to be like, all right, a first of all, I just came here to fuck him. <laughs> exactly uh i did not come here to like you know engage in any religious bonds with anybody second of all he lied to you and he brought you across an ocean and i know that's uncomfortable for you but that's what happened mm. third of all i'm gonna continue to work for this guy i, I mean like she's in an impossible position it's yeah so it's uh, yeah the, uh fuck that guy anyway but yeah that's the kind of thing that dudes used to do in these books all the time i'm actually surprised that we haven't had one that's more like this in the past because i remember these books being more like this yeah than like the ones that are actually kind of great we've we've run into a lot of really great we've we've been lucky yeah um oh boy here we go would scarlett johansson be in the movie uh yes and also no oh my god I, <laughs> this is this book is very much a nice white lady trying to like i mean and like i think what is what is admirable about this book is that in a world where historical romance does a lot of cultural erasure and in color erasure this book has people of color yes and and living just normal lives yes in the caribbean yes so nobody is like being you know persecuted subjected nobody is like a happy whatever like there's no this book really tries to make a point of not having anybody be basically you know and, and the people who live on the island seem very much like just fucking regular people who are being reported on just yeah. doing stuff so i mean like I, it's good in that point that um that it is full of afro-caribbean people who live on 
Schmarschmuda, living their regular lives. And there's nothing dramatic about it. And, you know, so it, it, it's got that going for it. And they talk a lot about um, the post-colonial, like, atmosphere of this place in that, like, you know, this used to be a colonized place. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it, it, it left the Commonwealth. And then this is what's, you know, what's going on in it. Um, like, that's all definitely to the good. But this project of erasing these people's race does not work. Yeah, I mean, they have uh, so many conversations about race. Like, there's one where, like, Lyle talks about, you know, if he really loves somebody that he could be in a biracial relationship or, you know. And but, like, are you? We can't tell. <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah, I, I think, I mean, again, I understand the reasoning behind making it so deliberately ambiguous. And, and this must have been very brave at the time. Yeah, and, like, we're coming at this from, you know, 40 years, basically, of, you know. Yeah, this came out when we were infants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it, I, again, it is admirable that somebody's at least trying to do a thing and trying to bring people and up. And this was the first one. I mean, this yeah. was, or, this yeah. was like, you know, actually really, truly groundbreaking. And it was probably also groundbreaking for the way that it treats the people who live on Compostello. Yeah. For that, for that way. I mean, like, it, the thing is, it's such a strange choice. Yeah. I mean, I get that she, maybe she thought it would be a cop out to have them this be like he, she runs a flower shop in london and he's a customer where like racism come up all the time right. and so but i mean like when she has that that thing like okay so she's walking on the road with terrence and they almost get hit by like probably a drunk driver because who's not drunk in this yeah because um, it's 1981 <laughs> but um and, and he almost says like you black bastard is yeah. like what he almost says her entire internal dialogue would be completely different if she was a white woman versus if she was a black woman. They would be different yeah. dialogues. They might have come to the same conclusion, but they would come from two very different lived experiences. Right. And and the fact that Anne Wheel just can't like okay, I get I get what she was trying to do, and obviously she couldn't have at that point said, oh okay, you know what, fuck it, I'm black, I'm, I'm admitting it. All right, H halfway yeah. through the book, uh, you but know, even as a white author, she couldn't write from that experience. No, know? of course she yeah. couldn't. Um, and, and I mean, like you know, I just it's it, it's so strange. It, it's like a toothache through this book. Yeah, it's like something that you keep poking with your tongue because yeah. it feels so weird. Yeah. There's like just a weird feel throughout it. So maybe Scarlett Johansson would be in the movie. I think so. Yeah, because it feels weird and strangely off-putting and is like you're not you can't really put your finger on why it's super fucking racist, but it is. Yeah. Yeah. You're not leaving the house looking like that. Outfits. So many outfits. So we've yeah, we've talked at length about the velour bikini and also the amazing <laughs> men's fashion loincloth um there's also okay so like she brings one uh look yeah to, to dress for dinner in. and and yeah. I, I i god this she's so young because she wears it with dudley what the fuck is his name roddy roddy dudley's the other guy jesus yeah. christ dudley's a real person in this book um and she feels like she's spent it yeah. Right. It's like a gauzy floral number. Yeah. Which I bet is super cute. But like, like she really hates that she has to wear it to her like de fucking on Antigua, which turns out she's getting married because she feels like it's been soiled almost. Yeah. By her wearing it with Dudley. Like, girl, a cute dress is a cute dress. You gotta like nix the past, exercise the past from that dress. If it makes you look good, you keep that dress. It doesn't care what happened in that dress. You just gotta go. She also has her flag. She has a red suit dress that's like a red jacket and red like tulip skirt with a pink shirt because she knows that red and pink are her best looks and then you know yeah then she changes from the the skirt to like some snazzy pants and um, i think she even changes like uh, she's got her high heels and her not so high heels yeah. so you know it, it, it's the golden age of air y'all i mean i yeah. guess kind of late in the golden age of air but you used to dress up to fly yeah so, would your 12-year-old self have dog-eared any pages? This book is... Well, no, I would not have wanted to be hornier because it would have, I'm sure, been terrible. <laughs> but, like, nothing good happens. No. Like, they don't really ever do anything fun. 30-year mortgage and nobody fucks. They just talk about her virginity all the time. Yes. And, like, she really wants to do it. But, like, I think at one point, we like, he touches her boobs, and that's, like, the most exciting thing that happens. I mean, the kisses are, like, the that's fiery fine. kind, you know, and all. and But I can't not think about his little creepity crawlity caterpillar mustache. Yeah, so bad. Um, it's not Vincent, is it? Vin 
Victor. <laughs> Victor. <laughs> He's a bad one. Um, <laughs> what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire? It's got to be some kind of like... It's a rum punch. Ice. Oh, no, you're right. It's a rum punch. It's a rum punch. And then should a human being in the 21st century read this book? Fuck no. Yeah, this book. Well, no, you you might want to because it is actually a curiosity. Yeah. It's- the same reason we read it. It is a, a great curiosity. The thing is... The the biggest problems of the book were not weirdly the erasure of the race of the people. No. It's everything else. Everything else in it is terrible. I mean, that's weird at all. But no, everything else, they're like, oh, I thought this was just going to be like odd racially. No, 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 no. It's just got like so many other oh like, God, holy shit, terrible. this is unhealthy businesses inside of it. Yeah. So this has been our break- breakdown of. So this has been our breakdown of Ann Wheels. Blue Days at Sea. Blue Days at Sea. This is Bodice Tipplers. You know where you can find us. You can find us at, on Twitter at BTipplers, Facebook Bodice Tipplers, Instagram Bodice Tipplers, BodiceTipplers.com. And if you're so inclined, Patreon.com slash Bodice Tipplers. A good way to support us that is cheap is to rate, like us, review free. us. It's free. Uh, well, yeah, cheap is also free. So. <laughs> Bodice Tipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts.